Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Birchall. Today for the Mixed Media Technique Tag, we are in the finishing category. And for me, a page, an ATC, a tag is not complete until it has some kind of title or some kind of quote or word. So today's video is all about using your computer to make your own quotes that are, can be personalized and customized and really one of a kind and add, be one more element that adds interest to your page. Finishing with fonts, a way to add loads of interest to your page using your computer. Often the quotes will have a white background and that adds that pop of white and color. You can see some of the examples here. You can use smaller fonts or much bigger ones and match that to your page. The white matches the white in the eyes, and then I added the white around the peacock feather border. You can match the font to the feel of the page. This girl has attitude, so does the font. This is kind of a dreamy font matching the background. This has a linear feel to it, and so does the font that I chose. This font looks like a ransom note, but it adds a little bit more black so you have less white. You can mix and match fonts to fit the theme that you're going for. You can outline it in a sketchy fa fashion with single lines or double. You can cut the font, the quote out and arrange it however it works on your page. You can cut out individual letters after making them really big and then use those. If you're keeping it white and black, you can also embellish what's there. Here I've used the stylus and added dots with acrylic paint. You could keep going black and white or you can add the color from the background like I did here. You can paint over the letters and the font that you've picked to match the background. Here I made it pink and gold to match the background. You can glue the cutout quote onto jelly prints or colored paper. Or you can actually color the paper that you printed the quote onto and use that to match what's going on in the picture. Here I painted it pink. Here I use an old English font and I made it kind of gold so it would fit the old patina. Often I use gold in my picture somewhere so painting the background of, a, of the quote works for me. You can color the paper then paint, the, paint over the font and outline the font. Here I used pink for the font to match the pink in the page. The white was simply too stark. Don't limit yourself to one color. Here I put a wash of all the autumn colors on the quote. And usually I out, re-outline the quote with a liner brush or a liner pen. Here again you have me making the quote gold, here it's green and I've cut it to kind of flow with the page. You can print out the quote on deli paper and I'll put a link to the video where I show how to do that. Deli paper will give a translucent effect. You will see some of the color through it, but it will not necessarily go clear, although some deli papers do. It's a lot less stark than the white. Here, the deli paper, I kind of colored it and it seems to have disappeared. You can see where the font, where the quote is, but it's 
lighter. You don't have that contrast. Some tissue papers, some daily papers do go transparent where you can't see them anymore. And you'll just have to try the papers that you have to see if it's giving you a translucent where you can see the color through it or a transparent where you, it disappears. You can cut out the quotes or the individual words and letters. You can do that by hand, fussy cutting like I did here. Or for smaller quotes, you can do what I call a half cut or close cut, and you remove most of the white because you don't want that contrast. I did the same thing here. I didn't want so much white. I wanted the black and the gold to shine through. And since I've gotten my silhouette cameo, I use it to cut out quotes and paste them on there. You can cut out the individual letters with your silhouette as well. You can make them bigger or smaller. Here I've colored them gold and I've glued them on. I've used a swirly script here to match the swirl in the background. Here I traced over the die cut or the stencil and then painted the word in black. I've done some more here. I plan on doing more on fonts in the future, so look for more videos or blog posts dealing with fonts. And now let's take those tags from the last mixed media technique tag and finish them with fonts. So what we're going to do now is finish these tags. We're going to put a font onto these tags. So what I did, again, just to recap, because they all have butterflies, I looked for quotes or phrases that somehow related to the feeling that was here. So we're going to do some different applications with each of the tags and because I did plan this out when I was doing the background I didn't glue the butterflies down I did play with it and you can see here that I actually have pictures of what my arrangement was going to be so we're just going to go and I'm just going to give you some of the insight into why I did what I did. So as you can see on this one, I cut out a lot of the white. I did, you know, half fussy cutting. And when I set up the quote, I have some bold script because I wanted the bold black to go with the black in the butterflies. And I wanted it to really stand up from what could be a kind of a busy background. And I use script stamp or script a script and a different one. So I combine them. And I learned to do that combining them by looking at the sentiment stamps that you can buy and which ones I liked. I inevitably liked the ones that combine different fonts together. So the, I'm okay with a little bit of white because there is white dots in the butterfly and the white in the background. So for this one, I think we're done. So I am simply going to apply gel medium to this. And be done. Now I'm putting it in the bubble here because I kind of, like, kind of just like how that looks. And I did spend time auditioning where they were going to go, even before I glued down the butterflies. So I don't have a system yet as to why I put where I put it. As soon as I figure out in words that I can use to describe it to you, I will, I'll make a video about it. But I want the eye to kind of go down. There are three words, there are three butterflies. So 
So we're going to leave that. I'm not sure I'm going to do any highlighting around there at all because I think that might take away from the background. So we're done that one. Now this one I like again the black and the bold part of it and I like I have these lines these very linear lines in there against the swirls so we have the swirls of the butterfly and that so what I did is I had typed out the word dream and this is was a font that you can download from tofont.com and but I really like how this stands out it just looks like it's all composed we've got the black on the outline and then when I cut it out instead of cutting out just the, right to the black I left a white border so it works with the lines in the in the background so again we're just going to put that one in there and I'm going to kind of center it a little bit in the middle and I'm getting some of the Stabilo all pencil that I had put on the details of the butterfly I'm getting that off onto the the page and the, my brush here So there we have it. Now when that dries, I may come around with this with the Stabilo and highlight it around the quote, which is often something that I do as well. So this one, I had the quote, Capture Joy. I just wanted something to go with the playfulness of the cat playing with, you know, and I picked, now that is too big and too bold. Now I couldn't have it going there again too choppy so I did actually end up printing it out onto smaller now the reason I'm putting it up here as opposed to down here and it could you know it could go either place but I put it up here because it looks to me like the cat is capturing joy and the butterflies and that's where the joy is up there so again, I like the boldness of the white in this one. And because I've got so much going on in the background, I'm not leaning towards coloring it. But that is something that you can do, and that's why I wanted to show you in the journals what you could do if you don't like that stark white. And there we have it. Now this font actually makes the line. It puts it in the boxes. So again, if you're interested, go to defont.com. Check out the different fonts. You're going to find ones that you like, that are going to, you know, speak to you. It's very easy to save it. Now on this one, and I cannot remember, I'm going to we have the saying let dreams take flight okay there's flight So when you look at that, the white against the white of the background doesn't seem to work. It, it just is too light. So this is a case where I may do one of two things. I might 
go through my colored paper and this is this is cut out from um, colored coffee filter also I might use some jelly prints that are the color that or using some of the um, colored paper towels that I have in my stash so what I would do is just cut that out and audition which one looks best if any of them so I might put this here and it's a lot of little bits of fussiness So uh, instantly, that's better. Having that darker color. I think this is just a little too, too red. So, and I'm just gonna put this one down here. And I'm looking to see which one I like better. And actually, I like this one better than this one. This one's very pale. So I think what we'll do is cut another one of these. Okay, so I kind of did all my cutting and I'm looking at it in the camera. And I'm thinking, well, maybe we're going to put, do we want this to have as well? Hmm. You know, before I was saying no, but now I'm saying maybe. Yeah, I think I'm going to go that route. Never say never. Let dreams take flight. And so now we've added a little bit of color a little bit we've taken a little bit of the white away from the white on the white in this case so what we're going to do kind of a two-step process We're going to glue this onto the jelly print. And let that dry. Okay. And there you have it. Now I might outline that with black after it's dry. I'm going to make that decision in a little bit. And this is going to say spread your wings. Now I want to actually make this kind of overlap and I want to get rid of the white because it's just too stark. So I'm going to try doing this one with tissue paper and I'm going to actually tape this down. going to trim this one up a little bit because I want this to overlap. I don't want it on the straight lines like it is. I want it to kind of be in there.
Now I could try to do this with deli paper, but I promised you that I would show you this. So I'm just putting the tissue paper over it. And then I'm just getting out my Micron pen, or your pit pen. And I'm tracing the font So I'm just taking the quote that I've traced onto tissue paper and I'm kind of, I paint it with water around it just to get kind of these um, kind of cut edges. We don't want straight cut, scissor cut edges um, in there. And I've seen this used mixed media Jen I believe has some I've followed her since I started she's got some great videos check her out that's who I've seen doing it um, however I've seen you know lots of others using this as well So I'm going to start by putting, getting some gel medium now, and we'll just progress from there. So it's not getting totally um, transparent as I would have expected. Maybe when it dries, it will be more so. And again, tissue papers are going to vary, so, you know. Some tissue papers may work best. I know that Mixed Media Jen, I think, she, I think it was her, said the cheaper the tissue paper, the better. So. Okay, so we have that done. So I'm just going to go off camera and dry this. And I'll be back for the next step. So as you can see, it did not dry completely transparent. You can definitely see it. So I'm, I'm okay with how it looks. It did still allow me to layer it so that it's not, it's all one flat surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead. And like I said, you're going to have to try your tissue papers that you have. I've um, had success with it but I, I don't keep my tissue papers all separate so you know what I've got here on the side I have some artist loft gold and what I'm going to do is
paint with the fine liner brush and I'm just okay so now that that's thinned out Just going to let that dry. I'm going to put that off to the side. Now since we have the gold out, what I have here on this tag are letters that I cut out. Now I didn't cut those out by hand. I used to. Now I have my Silhouette machine which can cut any font that you have downloaded including any of the free fonts and stuff so you can cut it out of white paper like I did the this or you can cut it out of any kind of colored paper or jelly prints which is what I did here now to store these once they're cut out and you've very finicky lip gone what I do is I just put them into a little Ziploc bag that I get from the dollar store so nothing expensive they don't have to be heavy duty and I just put the phrase that is so when I'm printing a sheet I might print a whole sheet and then I store them like that so that's what that is so if I had a gold sheet I could have printed this right out onto gold I didn't so what I want to do here is paint these gold so you can paint it whatever color shade to match perfectly your page sometimes it's one or you know one coat might do sometimes you're going to need a couple coats of paint to do the job so I'm just going to go off camera and finish painting these and dry them and then I'll be back. Okay, so I am just got them all done and I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Painting them, it's kind of a finicky job. Um, just like cutting them out is. So I normally would not cut out for something so small as a tag. You know, I would say I would cut it out for either a canvas piece or um, one of my larger journal pages. I wouldn't deal with such tiny, tiny little things for that just because, you know, it's so very, very finicky. But I wanted to show that that is one of the possibilities that you can create with that so if you want you can put a line and make sure it's there I'm just kind of eyeballing it um, this one what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually color the papers to match I don't like the white on there there's a lot of white space on my background to begin with and I don't necessarily need to see it so I did a test run this time and I just using a couple colors that I know I were in the background and I'm just going to color the the tag or the letters with that.
So while I'm coloring this with a wash of a couple colors that I pulled from the background, I'm just going to speed this video up. It, the video kind of got a little bit long. And I'm just going to save all this luscious color for um, a background or something that I'll be able to use in the future. Okay, so I've positioned them and I've kind of, when I've played with it, I want to go down the thing because I like the movement of the butterflies flying down and I want to continue that. I want the that. to kind of flow with the butterflies. So that's why I've decided to place them and cut them the way I have. And that matters too. How and where you place them adds to or detracts from the page. And the only way to get that is to audition it. Try one, try the other. Take a picture and look at the picture. And that usually brings it into focus which one looks better. Sometimes we can't tell when we're in the thick of the decision making, but if you take pictures and then look at it, um, it kind of jumps out at you. And because with the paint, I got a cover of paint, it got a little bit, um, the script got a little bit uh, washed out. I'm just adding some more color. And that just makes it pop again and match the black of the butterflies. So now that all the tags basically have their letters on, we're going to add, look and see if there's any other finishing that we need or want to do. So this one, I could outline it, or I could use the Stabilo All Pencil. Now this one, I think what I'm going to do is actually grab my ink tips, watercolor pencils, you do not always have to shade with um, the black. Here I'm going, I'm using Shiraz. We're going to add some of this Shiraz color around the outline. Now I had put gold there, so and that will still be seen. I am also going to splatter with this Shiraz. So this one, I am putting the dots on the letters, 
just embellishing the letters. And I'm just using the gel pen to do that. I could use a stylus and acrylic paint if I wanted to. This one, I think what I'm all I'm going to do is maybe outline it. Just that little bit. And now I could, if I wanted to, paint the word dream green if I wanted. I could put dots in there because I've got dots here. Um, but I'm glad, I, I like how it is. It's simple and it's easy. This one, same thing. I think I'm, I'm just done. I'm not going to do anything more to it. So here are the finished tags with the different fonts. We have some script fonts. We've taken different fonts that some samples of different fonts you can get offline. We've taken fonts where we've combined two different fonts and two different sizes. We've cut close, we've cut it out, we've left the box around it. We use deli paper. Um, we colored the paper. It's really, the sky is the limit with what you can do when you create your own font using your computer, your word processor, downloading free fonts. Um, they don't just have to be black and white. They can be any color. So that ends our mixed media technique tag in the finishing category. Go have some fun with fonts. Enjoy some close-ups of the finished tags. These tags have been with us through two mixed media technique tag, matching focal points to backgrounds, number 13, and this one finishing with fonts. I hope you've learned some ways that you can add a little something something to your project using fonts and your computer in new ways. Please take the time to subscribe to my blog at creativekatie.wordpress.com. I do plan on starting a series on fonts, giving you a little bit more information and samples of fonts that I use a lot to create my pages. Thank you, as always, for watching and subscribing and for leaving those comments. It does mean the world to me. Have fun.